Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and it's 5 a.m. on Saturday in London. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Thank you so much for joining us. And tonight we'll be doing another citizen science project, Gee Witch Hunters. What? That line right there. Oh. Go ahead. Gee Witch Hunters <laughs> aims at improving um, the performance of current gravitational wave detectors in the experimental study of the universe. Some such instruments have reached extraordinary sensitivities to accomplish this task. They are also very delicate and prone to spurious disturbances of non-astrophysical origin. Our goal is to better understand their disturbances and find new solutions to them. <laughs> want to introduce me? No. Okay, I'll introduce myself. You want to share the screen though? Sure, why not? Awesome. <laughs> you know it's live when. All right, so this is G Witch Hunters. And as with all of the Zooniverse pro projects, they have this very beautiful, nice introductory page. And uh, you can, of course, click on Learn More. But I would say hold off for a second because I want to go through this and tell you about it because it's a little different than some of the other ones. And, of course, we have all the navigation, as usual, about classify, talk, collect, those ones. Um, yeah, and that's the website. Thanks so much, Jeff. Um, so hold off on the learn more for now because it'll put you into, I think it's random, but I don't know for a fact because if you scroll down just a little bit more, it's, see how it's a little different? We have some choices here. There's playground, level one, uh, level two, level three, and some mobile challenges. So it is going to be uh, in fact, we're going to talk about this more than just tonight. This is sort of the introduction to this, and we'll go through what the playground uh, aspect of it is. Uh, but anyway, let me let me get into it because these are the the um, the charts you're going to be looking at, and they call them um, stenographs. I think we'll we'll see it in a minute. Uh, but these are what they look like, and we see that it's only 21% complete, and it's going pretty fast. When we first looked at this. It was what seven percent? Yeah, about Jeff? seven percent. So yeah, that was, in just a week, it's jumped up to twenty-one percent. Um, and you can see all the volunteers, uh, how many things have been classified, how many subjects they have, and how many are completed. Yeah, it sounds looks like it's not a huge data set. Certainly not now. It isn't. Uh, of course, sometimes these things get added to, and everything. And here is what Jeff read to us uh, about. Um, nope, that's not it either. <laughs> Where did I find? I picked it up from somewhere. Sorry, uh, but this will tell you a little bit more about these um, this project and uh, some information from the researcher. Uh, I've got another slide about the organization that's behind it. Reinforce research infrastructures for citizens in Europe. So this is um, not a U.S. Pro program. So that's cool because uh, Zooniverse can talk about any projects from anywhere in the world. So. You can learn more about it there. And they have um, some links that you can go to see some of the other parts of what they're talking about. And then we delve into um, the research part. Uh, and then, of course, we'll go through all these um, team results, education, FAQs. Surfing space time. These are these uh, gravitational waves that they've been uh, finding. And, and you remember, we did actually one um, about LIGO, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Remember that with a little whoop? And uh, this is just sort of more of that. You know, they've been, they've been doing more work on it. And in this project, you will help scientists make gravitational wave detectors more sensitive and uh, to listen to new sources in the universe. And they have some, this beautiful picture is complete, and there's a little more information, as usual, with these, uh, these uh, this aspect of the research part. And then we go into the team. So you can see uh, that this is the Virgo collaboration, 
and the European Gravitational Observatory, EGO, in Kasinka. <laughs> it's probably pronounced different because it is uh, near Pisa, Italy. Um, so it's probably Kashinka, Kashina. All right, so there's more than 650 members of the Virgo collaboration, and there are 119 institutions in 14 different countries represented by this particular project. And there is a lot more down here. It talks about some of the uh, the lead individuals, that kind of thing. All right, and I went to results. Well, it looks like you've got to come back because they don't actually show you any results yet. So this is a really new project. That's what that, that, to me, that's what that indicates. All right, and so they do uh, talk about other useful resources for when you want to learn more about these particular no, PhD comics. Does that mean stand-up <laughs> com comedians or cartoons? Uh, I don't know. I didn't click on this yet. So uh, I would say have one of our uh, viewers go ahead and take a look at that and come back and tell us because uh, we are going to do some more of this. This is just sort of the introduction today. Hey, hey, Cliff. Oh. Oh, very good. Oh, right. Yeah, Norfolk Island. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Cliff. Really appreciate that. All right, so there's lots and lots of other information you can access with this project. And they have their frequently asked questions. What are they? And why are they important? And I encourage you to go there and read up on all of these. What are the sources? See, I left a, a cliffhanger there for you. All right, so we're going to delve into this first part, which is called Playground. There are all these other parts, and we're going to talk about them. I'm pretty sure we're going to have at least one more segment about these, and that's going to be next week. All right, so. And as usual, they have these nice tutorials. I just love this picture. And it's um, describing, you know, what you're going to be doing. And this in this Playground level, it's pretty cool because they give you feedback on all of your choices. Uh, and as usual, we have these nice buttons and the continue. I did expand out the, um, the information in this particular one. So you'll be introduced to the data recorded by gravitational wave detectors, like the advanced Virgo uh, one, which is in this picture, that's in Italy. Very cool, huh? It looks a lot like uh, the Lego one. And so they're glitches that you're going to be identifying. Transient excesses of energies in the data. And you're going to help them sort them out. So that's what the project is, helping them sort out the different glitches. And here is an example of one. So then they talk about, oh, here it is, spectrogram. So these spectrogram images or what you'll be seeing in this project and your help sort out the different kinds of and here's here's the text of it and i actually pulled this little uh part of it from um one of these because they they reference it um the lighter spot at the center uh that's a blip glitch in this particular instance so when you see them like this they call it a blip and here's that, here's that um, energy ranking. So the lighter it is, the higher the energy. And of course they have a field guide. So there's lots of information. I will cover that just briefly uh, because there's a lot in there. All right, so here we have the blip and this is a different kind. And so they talk about this um, being, let's see, uh, so you're, you're identifying the shape of these. And here's, here's the information. But I'm just going through these various uh, tutorial slides here. All right, so, so we're, identifying, we're classifying the glitches. And in this case, for the uh, playground version, they have kind of a subset of all of them, just to help you, you know, introduce you to it kind of get used to it and uh, they call them <laughs> some funny things blips koi fish scattered light glitches and that's the one 
in this particular image that's kind of basically down in here the sort of arch and they tell you about that too the arch with the Ah, looks like it's somewhere else. All right, again, Field Guide is a, a very good resource. Oh, and here's to koi fish. <laughs> you can see a fish in there. Mostly it's because of these fins. So it's sort of like a blip, but it's got the fins. That's how you know it's a koi fish. This one happens to have what it looks like eyes. <laughs> they don't all do that. So the glitch is staring at you. Yes, the glitch is staring at you. But they don't all have eyes like that. So they um, they do have you know similarities to the blips, but they have here it is they have fins, and there there are there is more information in the field guide, so you could actually have a variety of things. Um, so it doesn't necessarily belong to any particular one. Uh, they do have a category called others, and we'll see that in a second. Uh, and and maybe and it doesn't sound very common but you might find nothing. I do not see anything. And they have a category for that too. All right, so we continue on with our slides, another nice shot of their detector. They, um, I'm gonna go down to the, where the words are. You're almost ready to start. So once you've picked your class of what it is, blip, koi, scattered, um, you want to click on the done button. And so this one's really easy. You just look at it, pick pick one, the one you think it is, click the done button. And in the playground, they will tell you if you've picked correctly. They'll tell that it's hit or misses. And once you're comfortable with these examples, you can go ahead and try the next levels. And that's what we'll talk about next week. We'll talk about more of the levels because this is an introduction. It's uh, pretty lengthy. I've got, as you can see, 25 pages here. And uh, we didn't want to go too crazy tonight. So basically, that's it. And they, uh, oh, and th this is new for, for um, a Zooniverse project. I have never seen this before where they have sort of a survey for you. So reinforce wants some feedback. And like I said, that's the first time you click the let's go and it, it brings you over into the actual project. So in this case, you look and see what it is that it looks like. And then you have the choices here, blip, koi fish, scatter light. I do not see anything and other. And from my perspective, this looked to me like scatter light. So that's what I picked, scatter light. And I clicked on the done button. You can see it down here in the bottom. I just blew it up here for you. It has lots of eyes. It has many eyes, yes. But mostly it's about this arch, oh. I think. And, and also um, the level of it. So here it's between um, 10 and like 50. And I believe this is a logarithmic scale here. See how it varies between the different, you know, it's very great. That is and, a log yeah, it's scale. logarithmic, right. So, so this is this is the energy levels. I think is is a big factor of this, and the fact that it's an arch. All right, so go ahead and click on the done button, and there you go. In fact, this was correct. You click on the OK, and it gets you back into the next image. And to me, this looks like a koi fish. So it could be a blip, but you got these kind of fin things on the side, and I see a little tiny eye there, which is not actually part of the koi fish, you know, image. However, it kind of tells me, hmm, it's not really a blip. I think it's koi fish. I click the done, and they give me feedback. So all the ones in this playground segment are telling you exactly what you did. Yes, you did, you did well. Keep up the good work. You hit OK, and you move on to the next one. Now this one, and you see how it's higher energy? It's up in the 100. I didn't really know. So I picked, I do not see anything. And of course, this is how you learn, because I guess I was wrong. This is a miss. Uh, oops, this seems to belong to a different glitch class. Try again with the next example or refer to the field guide. Again, yeah, go ahead. I think that they missed something here because if they actually told you what it's supposed to be, then then you'd 
basically learn how to associate that because I'm thinking scattered light, just not because it has an arch, but just because it has a long horizontal. Well, except for one of the features of the scatter light is it's the fact low. that it's down low and it sort of arches. Not all of them have a distinctive arch like the ones we've seen so far. Yeah, it would have been helpful to tell me which exactly was the one that mm -hmm. um, this would be. And I don't know how sophisticated this programming is. It, you know, maybe it just gives you a hit or miss. Right. And it yeah. doesn't actually tell you mm -hmm. um, what you did. It depends on the, it depends on the programming, right? But it has to know which image it is to match it to see whether it's a hit or a miss. Mm, okay. So. Yeah, yeah, you know more about programming than yeah, I I'm do. A, yeah, I'm a programmer. It's like, right. it'd be real simple to do that. Got it. Okay. All right. So that's how you learn. And the field guide, like I said, it's pretty extensive. And it really delves into a lot of aspects of this. The blip, we haven't even seen any of these. Extremely loud is what they call it. Helix, koi fish, there's our koi fish. Low frequency burst, scattered light, scratchy. So I was thinking, well, maybe that one that I missed is in fact scratchy because see how high it is? Mm -hmm. It has that sort of similar signature. Um, I, think, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it looks like teeth, but maybe that's what it was and I didn't get it right. So, but I don't know that that's on the list yet. When you delve into the different levels, it might show up. Uh, I know for level one, I've already looked at it and there are some, like I think this Tomty is in there. But yeah, it kinda, I kind of realized that later. It's like, mm, maybe that's more like a scratchy one. Uh, so it's probably others. But we'll see. Violin mode, whistle. There's all kinds of different glitches to identify. And so you just keep going. You, you pick, you click the done, and you keep going. If you need to come back to the tutorial, it's always handy right here. And the field guide shows up along the side. Uh, when you see this one highlighted, that's the task at hand. That's part of the project. All right. So, like I said, we can go into all of these different things, and I think we're going to delve into the, uh, some of the levels, maybe the mobile challenge ones, uh, but that's going to be in part two next week. Yeah, and my thought is the mobile challenge ones might be formatted for a mobile phone. Yes, I think that's exactly so. They're going to be formatted for the mobile phone. I happen to be on my desktop computer, so... Yeah. All right. Do we have any questions? Um, nope. Just All right. Cliff introducing himself. And awesome. Okay. So that's that's the basic project. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll kind of go into into depth more on those other levels next week. So I hope you can come back. You've seen the intro. And uh, go ahead. Take it away. Okay. Some stellar events this week. December 10th through December 17th. On December 11th, Venus and Pluto are in conjunction. One of which you'll be able to see. <laughs> It's also National App Day. So check out our um, When Is Your Birthday app on our blog. It's only orbits. On any other planet, it would be different. <laughs> um, December 12th, Comet Leon Leonard. I keep wanting to say Leonard. I don't know why. It's Leonard, yeah. Uh, Comet Leonard. That's, that's the discoverer's name. His name is Leonard. Yeah. That's his last name, actually. Yeah. Sw switch. It switches to evenings, so you can look forward to at dusk. Yeah, right now it's in the morning, um, although it's very close to the 12th. Um, you have to get up like 90 minutes before sunrise to go find it near um, Arcturus. Yeah, and that, that just doesn't exist. Sure it does. For some people, maybe. <laughs> Not in my world. <laughs> okay, it. December 13th. The Geminid meteor shower peaks and is visible all night. But there's a big moon um, that, that'll interfere with it because it's pretty darn bright. Yeah. And it'll be in the sky for over half the night. Yeah. December 15th, weekly space hangout. Dr. Paul Halpern discusses his new book, Flashes of Creation. And it just makes me think of the universe opening its trench coat. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say it. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Also, Uranus <laughs> and the moon are in conjunction. Again, one of which you'll see. Um, unless you've got a really good scope. Yeah. Um, December 17th is our Friday night show again. Back to Friday night. Oh. Yep. And oh. 
Cliffhanger. We've uh, had large light lightning. Oh storms. wow! Really? Wow. Yeah. Careful out there. No more flooding, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. It was terrible. Don't, and 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 don't golf. <laughs> I don't know if that's an Australian thing. That's sort of an American thing. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. We got it from the Scottish. From the Scottish, okay. Um, and they have lots of weather. Yeah. <laughs> Find us. How do they even see it? I think it gets foggy there, doesn't it? How do they even like see Like everywhere. That? Yeah. Um, Find us Friday night, Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. Quit laughing at me, stumbling. I'm not. Uh huh. Okay. Ongoing events and activities. Unfold the universe at hashtag unfold the universe. Imagine what the Webb Space Telescope might reveal. Deadline for submissions is de uh, is December 18th. So a little um, over a week, and I think it's for anybody. I saw pictures yeah. of people. It's them with their with their uh, with their artwork. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, design. Also, design moon digging robots, lunabotics, junior contest by NASA. Um, enter art or be a judge. Yep, it's for it's basically um, K through twelve mm -hmm. students, and uh, they're they're trying to uh, get young engineers <laughs> to help design a new robot, new robot concept for an excavation mission on the moon. What's what does Cliff say now? <laughs> okay, you're somewhat Sorry. delayed. I don't know which one you're laughing about this time. But oh, the trench coat, I think. I well, have no, a he, feeling. You already no, laughed he, about that one. So you did, he, okay. Um, I think you're here. Yeah. So um, the winner from each category will be announced March 29th, 2022. So one of them is ending soon, and the other one has some time. So next spring. All right, so if you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, astronomy, like that, we would love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, December 17th, for G Witch Hunters, a bit more, and that is helping scientists improve the performance of the gravitational wave detectors. We'll call it part two. We are looking forward to some future guests. Uh, I actually uh, might have a young person, someone under 18. I have a couple of people on, on line for that, but we do have Josh Carlson scheduled for January 21st at this point. He wants to come back and discuss the second space race that's currently ongoing between the US and China-Russia collaborations. And we are in talks with a few more people. Like I said, even some young people now, I think. I hope, fingers crossed. Wish us luck on that one. So, yeah, anybody else uh, have any <laughs> crazy comments? No, just it? me. Just you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a great week, folks. And we will see you on Friday, December the 17th, with part two of G Witch Hunters. Good night. <laughs>